Are your students or children working on fractions where they're getting it a little complicated, like mixed numbers and improper fractions? Well, if so, then this episode is just for you. So welcome to Math 345 Support. Hey everyone, my name is Sarah, but a lot of third, fourth, and fifth graders know me as Miss McCarthy because I create a ton of video lessons just for them. But you know what? I was thinking about it and I said, you know, I think I should start making some videos for you, for teachers, for parents, for tutors, basically anyone looking to help a student make math make sense. Let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. This is a third grade episode for today, uh, but it does apply to fourth and fifth grade because fourth and fifth grade kind of build upon the top, build upon the blah, 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 blah build upon the foundation that I'm about to teach you today. All right, let's do this. In the last episode, I broke down the simple ideas of fractions, okay? The basics. We're gonna take it up a notch for third graders in this episode. So let's say that we have an example like this. That right there, we read this as two and three fourths, right? This kind of number is called a mixed number. Excuse my hand. I knocked it on a door. I'm so clumsy, y'all. I knocked it on a door. I didn't want you seeing all that. <laughs> all right, so this is called a mixed number. And why is it called a mixed number? Well, we have two parts here. For the first part, we have our two, which is a whole number. And then over here, we have three fourths, which is our fraction. And we've kind of mixed it up by combining the whole number and the fraction. We now have a mixed number. Now, if we were to model this, we would draw two holes. In the last episode, I told you, told? <laughs> in the last episode, I told you all that I like to model using rectangles. It, uh, it just helps to make it um, especially when we start comparing. So we have two holes, plus we have a part of a hole, which is our fraction, right? All right, so there we go. Two holes, so what I'm gonna do, hold on one second, I'm gonna get a color. I'm back, did you miss me? We have two holes, right? We're gonna go ahead and shade in two holes that we're considering. We talked about that in the last episode, and we need another one that was one hole, so now here's two holes. And finally, we're going to go ahead and break that last one. It's part of a whole, it's a fraction. We learned in the last episode that when it is even, we can cut it in half and then do two on this side and two on this side to make our fourths, right? And we're going to shade in three fourths, three out of the four. That's our numerator, so it's what we are considering. Now we can also model that on a number line like this. Here's our number line. We know we start at zero and we're gonna jump one hole. The next would be two holes and the next whole number would be three, right? But we're not gonna quite get there because it's two and three fourths. So let's go ahead and go into between the two and the three between the whole numbers. We're gonna break those into fourths, similar to how we did over here. And so two and three fourths would be about right there because it's one, two, three out of the total four jumps. Now, that was the mixed number. There's another one. You know, students can kind of understand that. Two holes and then a fraction. They understand that. But what kind of gets them is what we call a fraction greater than one. I don't know why I say it like that. I've just been teaching for years and that's how I always say it. All right, a fraction greater than one. This is not a mixed number. It's a fraction that's greater than one. So when we have that, a fraction greater than one is where the numerator, you see that number on top? That's called the numerator. It describes the amount that is being considered. So when that numerator is greater greater, greater than the, ah, when the numerator is greater than the denominator, that is a fraction greater than one. I'm having a hard time with my lighting, I'm sorry, hang on. Okay, so how could we change two and three fourths into a fraction greater than one? Let's have it make sense by using a visual. So let's go back over here. Here we had our equal parts broken into four equal parts, right? That's our denominator. The total number of equal parts is our denominator. Well, technically these other two fractions could be broken into the same amount, so I'm going to do that. 
right? Now they're all broken into fourths. I haven't done anything. I've just placed little equal parts around those holes. Same thing on the number line. We could have divided all of these, this whole number line into fourths, right? So our denominator for the all of these fractions is four. And some people might think, but I see 12 equal parts. I see four, eight, 12 total parts. But the equal parts are inside of each hole. There's four equal parts in here. There's four total parts in that hole and there's four total parts in that hole. So here we have four fourths, here we have four fourths, and here is three fourths. So as you can see, our denominator is always four. That's why the denominator here is four for this particular example, okay, for two, third, two and three fourths. So next, how many shaded parts are there? That's the part that we're considering, which is the numerator. And we're gonna count all of those shaded parts. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. That means that it's 11 fourths, which makes sense here too. Again, we have our denominator of four, but there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven total jumps that it takes to get to that point. But the denominator, the total number of equal parts inside of each hole is four. So really two and three fourths is equal or equivalent to, oops, is equal to 11 fourths. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, I could just do four times two, which is eight, plus three, which is 11. I call that the multiply, then add, swoop. But you know what? I don't teach that in third grade. Why? Because I want them to understand visually what's happening here. That two and three fourths is actually equal to 11 fourths and being able to go back and forth using a visual model. Now in fourth and fifth grade, I do step it up and I teach more of a computation method that we might get into in the fourth and fifth grade videos later on. But that's how you do it here. Now if you have a specific skill that you'd like me to walk through in an upcoming video, you can just put it in the comments below or you can email me at McCarthyMathAcademy at G gmail.com. Those links are below. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy, so you can always DM me there. For this series of Math 345 support, I want to create material that's helpful to you, to the parents, to the teachers, to the tutors, anyone looking to help third, fourth, and fifth graders to make math make sense. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I do create a lot of videos just for students. So if this video helped you, imagine what a daily practice for students, having daily access to videos that walk them through step by step. Imagine what that could do for a struggling student. If you are in that situation where you need some daily practice for your students or for your children, please check out my website. You can find that link below, but it is McCarthyMathAcademy.com. All right, before we go, remember that you were born for a reason. You matter and what you choose to do with your life matters too. So get out there and change the world in your own special way and I will see you all next time. Bye!